doesn't pay for their work. A minister of the gospel, he preached, but he went beyond the four walls of the church and helped somebody. And he said, everybody can be somebody because everybody can serve. That's why we celebrate his life. Dr. King gave black people and poor people a new sense of dignity, a sense of purpose and destiny. Dr. King gave this nation a challenge to rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed and start being the land of the free and promoting freedom, justice, and equality for all. The tears that we shared in 1968 at Dr. King's death, we knew that we would shed those tears for many years to come because he gave his life to make our lives better. Many of us are serving in public life today because Dr. King and others gave the ultimate sacrifice. He was not a public official, never elected to public office or appointed, but now a monument is his honor in Washington among presidents. So today, this august body of the Georgia State Senate, not only pauses, but we stop today to give honor to the native son of Georgia, a man who's a 20th century prophet and a man who was truly a drum major for justice, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I yield the well. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> Chair and I, Senator from the 10th, on a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise, today, I rise today to say welcome back to my colleague from the 39th, and I can't ever remember a time where he has been so contrite in the well of the Senate. So we're glad to have you back, Senator. But more importantly, I'd like to recognize Dr. Smith and the students from Martin Luther King High School in Decatur, Georgia. These kids have traveled down here today to be part of this process. They've traveled here to learn about civics, to learn about the inner workings of government. And if you will, please join with me. And Dr. Smith, will you please stand? And the students from Martha King High School indicated, please stand so that we can recognize you. And may I add, the senator from the 43rd has joined with me in sponsoring the kids to come down here today. And please join us for lunch, because we'll be down here at your capital for the remainder of the day. And senator from the 43rd, thank you again. I believe they're in your district, but on the back side of mine. <laughs> thank you. God bless you this morning. Thank you, Senator. Always a pleasure to have school groups here to witness what goes on in this august body. Chair recognize senator from the 4th, Chairman of Appropriations. Sorry? Yes, for announcement. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, the Senate, uh, but all of you know, I'm sure, that next week or the Tuesday through Thursday, the joint hearings, uh, appropriations hearings for the two appropriations committees. You've got a schedule on your desk. Uh, you're, whether you're on the committee or not, you're welcome to join us. It, I will tell you, the first day is usually really crowded in there, but the seats across the back are, are reserved for legislators. And uh, if you want to join in when you're up here next week, any, uh, please stop by. You can watch it, of course, from your office, and, and I understand on the Internet as well. So this will give you an idea of when the different departments will be testifying, and I uh, hope that uh, you'll participate to the extent that you want to. If you have any questions, please look me up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Chair, can I sit from 35th on the point of personal privilege? Colleagues, senators, I rise uh, to remind you and in memory of 3.5 million people who one year ago, their lives were changed. 200 
plus thousand uh, actually died <coughs> in Haiti because of the earthquake that was 7.0, uh, a powerful earthquake that altered the lives of Haitians, for, Haitians forever. Their businesses and homes that many had spent their entire lives in were gone within seconds. Families were forever changed as they lost loved ones, old and young. However, this country came together and they collected money, they sent equipment there, many churches, organizations went there to honor them, to help to put that country back together again. It was a poor country that uh, continued to have uh, one hurricane after another, they in Hurricane Alley every year. Sometime they would have as many as four hurricanes in one year that would devastate portions of Haiti. But that is a beautiful country as far as the landscape is concerned. And all of the money that went there and the different help is not enough because people are still living in tents. There are more than one million people still living in tent city in Haiti. So we need to continue to not only send up our prayers, but send any kind of aid that we can. Uh, I know the United States gave a $1 million package and only one third of that money went there. Uh, it has not even gotten to us, so money is available and has not reached that area. And I stand because I'm with the organization called Sung Young, Sung Young, oh Lord, I cannot, Sun J Yo, which means remember them, uh, is in Creole. And it is a human rights trafficking organization. And I get the statistics every week as to how many of the young children are still being kidnapped, being taken, being snatched, even in the tents because it's not just a single family in the tent, it's hundreds of people in those tents. And mothers wake up and their children are gone. They're having to tie themselves to their children at night when they lay on the ground sleeping. So I know that many of us are not aware of what is still happening there. They're still trying to pick up their lives. They're still trying to build that country. But it can be a stronger Haiti and we can still maybe one day go and enjoy that beautiful land because it's just as beautiful as the other Caribbean islands. So I stand in memory of all those who lost their lives and we have more than 150,000 uh, Haitian descendants right here in the state of Georgia. And so those people have asked me to do what I can. So let's pray for the Haitians. Let's make sure that if we can do anything that we can to help them, that we do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Chair recognizes the majority leader. Mr. President, I move that the Senate stand adjourned until Monday, January 23rd at 10 a.m. Eastern. January 23rd, 10 a.m. that Monday morning. Read the announcements. Friday, January 13th, no meetings are scheduled today. Senator from 36, what purpose you rise? Announcement. Senator from 36 is recognized for an announcement. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, uh, as we leave uh, our session and, and begin to make our way home, I want to make you aware that this morning the um, an amicus brief, a friend of the court brief, is being filed uh, in the, the uh, lawsuit challenging the Affordable Care Act. Uh, the Supreme Court will be reviewing the, the lower court decisions. 535 state legislators around the country are, have signed onto that brief as friends of the court in support of the constitutionality of the federal health care law. Uh, there will be a press conference this morning at 11 in the South uh, Lobby. Uh, uh, those who'd like to demonstrate their support <clears throat> for this federal measure uh, that has offered relief already to 
uh, millions of people across the country and it's brought 46,000 young people in Georgia uh, uh, into coverage with insurance on their parents' policies. Uh, if you'd like to join us at 11 o'clock for a uh, press briefing on the health issues and challenges facing Georgia and on our support for uh, the Affordable Care Act, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Are there any other announcements? The majority leaders move that we stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Monday, January the 23rd. All of those in favor will say aye. All those opposed, no. That's the weakest no I've ever heard. Eyes clearly have it. <laughs>